Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. Little Buddy is hungry. And before he eats his food, he has to bark at it. I have to throw it up in the air. This is how he likes <laughs> to eat his food. He does this every time before he eats. I thought I would just share this with you all because it is, it's hysterical. And he throws it around. Yes, he's my little buddy. Okay, he has hunted it down. He's barked at it. He's thrown it around. So now it's safe to eat. So we're good to do a video now. So I thought I would go over some beginner questions with you all today. When to water and some other things about spiking orchids. How long does it take your orchids that are in spike to actually bloom? I've had several questions about that. So let's get to some beginner's questions today. And whenever I say beginner's questions, you know, it's always just a good idea to remind yourself of the things that you already know. It's really good for me to do these videos because it makes me think. It reminds me of the basics, and the basics are so very important. So I'm going to show you some of my fowls that are in different stages of needing to be watered. Okay, this one is in full water culture. I really do a full water culture, semi-water culture hybrid. Um, my full water culture orchids do get a break through the week. As a matter of fact, they get two dry days. Now this one, I just watered it. And about once a week or twice a week, just depends on how much humidity there's been, I like to go ahead and water the entire root system. And do you see how everything is nice and green here? Okay, I'm going to let that set for a day. This is going to be its dry day. Okay, so when you're watering your orchids, it's just about the same for any method that you use. Let me show you. This little moss orchid, I thought I was going to have to water it today, but it's been very rainy this weekend. So do you see how the roots are still green and pretty? And the moss has not completely dried out, so I'm going to wait a day or two on this one. Okay, here is a full water culture fowl. It had a dry day yesterday. It's still green, so I'm gonna wait a while. I'm probably not gonna refill this water until later on today, because as you see, it's turning silver up here, but this down here is still green, so I'm gonna let it dry out for just a little while longer. Okay, let's go to one that's in bark that needs to be watered. Do you see the difference? These are silvery, these are turning silvery. This has been five days since I've watered this one in bark. So this one needs to be watered. Now look at the difference in the green in here. There's still some green. I don't like for them to turn too silvery on me. I just don't. But see the difference between the green here and the green here. Do you see? That's intensely like a neon green. This is silvery green. It's kind of lost its sheen. So this is when you know if this was in full water culture or semi-water culture or any other method, any other growing method, I would be watering this orchid today. Okay, and I'm going to water this orchid now. And you're just going to watch as the roots turn beautiful and green almost immediately. I love to watch that. I've been growing orchids now. I've been growing orchids now for 15 years. I just realized the other day that it was the middle of February, 15 years ago, that I started growing orchids. So I've been doing this a long time and I still like to watch my roots turn pretty and green um, when I water them. It's just part of the happiness quotient that these orchids bring to my life. They bring me a lot of joy and happiness. And another subscriber question is, how long does it take from the time that my orchids start spiking until it starts blooming? That is a really good question. In the cooler temperatures, it can take months. This secondary spike that you see on Cool Breeze started the end of October and now it is 
February 11th. So it takes quite a while. Now, if you get a spike in, say, the spring and summer, it will bloom faster for you because that spike's going to grow faster due to the higher temperatures. Um, but in the normal time of the year, the fall is usually when your orchids will spike, your Phalaenopsis orchids will spike, I should say. And it can take months. So if it's taking a long time, just remember spring is coming and your spikes will bloom. And I had a really interesting comment from one of my subscribers this week that growing orchids has taught her patience. Yes, indeed. After you water them and fertilize them and give them the correct amount of light, they pretty much go on their own timetable. I want you to see what I found on my Catalea the other day. As you remember, over the summer, there was a sheath here, just a sheath. Now, all of a sudden, in this past week, this is what has happened. It's like when you get some growth with your orchids, you turn around and you think, oh my goodness, how did that happen? Let me show you the other sheath. It's just still a sheath. It's just sitting there. But soon, it's going to look very much like this. And this does happen really quickly. It is very interesting to watch Catalea's bloom. I love this Catalea. And this is my fowl, Carmen, and she is in spike. Now this spike has grown quicker because Carmen is out here in my orchid room with um, slightly higher temperatures, like about a two or three degree difference. And so I have noticed that with the brighter light and with the higher temperatures, this spike has grown faster. So this one I think has grown about I'd say this spike has grown three inches in about the past two weeks, which is amazing to me. And here is my beautiful little dendrobium, April's Hope. She is waiting for spring. As of today, the countdown is 37 days till spring. So I hope that you all just have a wonderful day and be highly favored, deeply loved, and greatly blessed. And we'll talk to you all next time.